So I am just going to present the first things which have already appeared in the net. Right? So uh, I cannot uh, stop this session without uh, showing the first things. So you can answer and uh, you can answer the first things in the chat box itself. So which is not aromatic. I have shown four compounds and you can answer in the chat box. I will give one minute time and I will give the explanation for it. For mid of 30 seconds, better, preferably 30 seconds. You can uh, give the answers in the chat box. So now it's easy for stain, so now you can check uh, A, option A it is uh, uh, what, after cyclo after tetra A, you know, uh, it's supposed to be anti-aromatic but it is non-planar, therefore it is non-aromatic. And second, it is supposed to be aromatic, then annually, since because of this hydrogen, hydrogen, inner hydrogen interaction, and it is not planar, because the planar key is the very important uh, requirement for a compound to be aromatic, then only it can you can sustain the induced recurrent. So this is also not aromatic, but this, if you consider this is anti-aromatic, you know, for, for a number of electrons, and this is aromatic. Therefore, you can see that option, the A option uh, 4, A and B, both are non-aromatic. The next question, which is the correct order of reactivity for the SN1 reaction between this tosylate, alkyl tosylate, uh, are, uh, and ethanol at 25 degrees Celsius. And the R group is given here. The R group for A is ethyl, R group for B is uh, this triphenyl methyl, C is isopropyl, and this is, you know, this is allyl, and this is benzyl. The same similar question may also be asked for SN2 and others. So what is the correct order of reactivity? Now there are four options. You can, by choosing one or two answers, sometimes you can easily eliminate other options and choose the answers. That is the right thing. Because, you know, uh, certain cases, first you have to eliminate the least possible answers. Then you have to go through these, uh, the most possible answers and choose the uh, correct answer. So I could not view the chat box. Uh, what is the answer? Can I put uh, uh, somebody? What's the answer? Actually, uh, uh, B is the answer. B. The so so one, two, three, four. Two. It is yes. Two. Uh, most of my selected with B, 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 C, D. B, uh, second option. Second option. B, E, D, C, A. Okay. Very good. So we know that. Triphenyl methyl radical or it is uh, a cation is the most stabilized carbocation. So in the SNO reaction, you must approach it that way. SNO reaction, uh, the reactivity depends upon the intermediate, you know. So the intermediate decides the stability of the intermediate decides the reactivity. So the, it forms a carbocation intermediate. So stability of the carbocation intermediate is the key factor. Now you have to just arrange them in the order of stability. You know, triphenyl methyl, see that you don't need to look into any other option. So, B is the highest reactive. The option is available only in two. So, you don't need to bother about others. You can easily choose. In that way, why I am telling you is in that way, if you are confident, you can choose and go. In that way, you can save the time for the other questions. That is very important. So, saving the time for the toughest questions. If you, if you are familiar with certain answers, then don't waste the time in that. You save the time for the toughest. B, the next is E, you know, uh, this is also stabilized benzyl. 
is stabilized by resonance then aligned so these three are stabilized by resonance and next comes uh, what uh, isopropyl it is because of hyperconjugation or you call it as uh, inductive effect then comes ethyl so two is the correct answer very good next one the predict the major products of the reaction Sambhat, what is the answer, Sambhat sir? I think I started to answer. What's the option they are given? I think only one of them has been given. Four is the right answer. Four, both one and two. Yes. Yeah, yeah it is, uh, of course, this is available in Jerimots itself. You know, this is not possible because of so for the mono substituted benzene, it is very easy to predict, but di substituted, you have to predict based on uh, three rules. And uh, uh, this cannot be possible because of the steric interaction. And you know, there is a rule when the uh, meta directing group is meta to the ortho para directing group, then the incoming group will go to ortho to the meta directing group. You know, this is this. Uh, and another, the first one says that when both meta directing and ortho para directing competes, only the ortho para directing dominates over the product. So, this is not possible because of the steric effect, but this will decide the uh, product because it, this is ortho para directing and this is meta directing. So, this will decide the product. So, only the product 2 is formed. So, next uh, regarding the spectroscope. I think this question is uh, asked in part B in the previous series of question. The NMR spectrum of AX3, so A type contains one proton, X type contains three protons, X bit lines at 2.4, 2 and 2.5 for X protons, you know, X protons and uh, uh, and 4.3, 4.4, 4.5 and 4.6 for A type protons measured from TMS with an instrument operating at 200 MHz, the chemical shift of A and X protons and coupling constants are respectively. They are asking for the chemical shift of A and X and for the coupling constants. If you solve coupling constant, you can eliminate two answers. Then you can say, decide between the other two. Or you can solve uh, the chemical shift, you can eliminate uh, the remaining answers and you can choose between the two. What's the uh, answer? Uh, now, only one person yeah. answered as uh, three is the right answer. It is three, sir. That is three. That is the right. Answer. Oh, okay, very good. Very good. Three. So, third, third is the answer. Okay, I'll explain. You know the NMR spectrum of the X three type. You know A proton and X three protons. You know these protons will not show a single line. This will be uh, again splitted by the neighbors because it shows three protons they show what uh, 2ni plus 1 that means four different uh, magnetic or the orientations for this so it will this single line will be split into four so you get a quadrant for these same protons so exactly the single line should be between 4.5 and 4.5 so therefore the correct chemical shift is 4.45 for a type of proton and X3 protons only one neighbor, so this signal will be uh, split into uh, doublet because it shows two different uh, magnetic orientations plus half and minus half, so it's split into doublet. 
so it is 2.4 and 2.5 so one signal split into double act. so middle midway is the original position of the signal so one is re shielded another is shielded so it is 2.45 so 4.45 and 2.45 are the uh, values so using this and importantly they have given the x proton value then a proton value then they ask for a proton value and x so you should not be get confused okay so now this see here that is the difference this is the correct one they are given what x proton and a proton but opposite they are given a proton and uh, a proton and x proton this is x proton and a proton so we have to be very careful right and also this so you can eliminate this answer now you have to choose between uh, these two eliminate this and this choose between these two and the coupling constant you can decide between the gap of this line right between these two either these or this the coupling constant will be same because they are the coupling partners therefore if you have if you calculate with this or this a signal or x uh, signal uh, the value will be same just you have this is 0.1 ppm 2.5 minus 2.4 it is 0.1 ppm if you multiply by operating frequency you will get the coupling constant the 0.1 into 200 you will get 20 so the 20 is the coupling constant so you can eliminate this answer so the correct answer is 2 4.5 2.5 and 20 but if you determine the coupling constant first you can eliminate these two answers and choose between these two. so in either way you can go for the answer so the correct answer is this i think this was asked in part b in the net question now this again this was actually asked, actually asked in part c four mark question the previous was two mark question this is a four mark question an organic compound having molecular formula c15 h14o exhibited the following signals uh, 2.4 singlet 7.2 doublet with a coupling constant of 8 hertz 7.7 .7 doublet with a coupling constant of 8 hertz and c13 number they have alkyl region only one signal and other regions aromatic region uh, it is, you, you have four signals and one one ninety. That you know that is due to your problem. And the structure is given. Earlier they give a uh, say problem. You need to what arrive at the structure and answer. Now it is very easy. They are given the structure. You just need to eliminate and choose the correct one. So compared to solving the problem, choosing the structure is rather very easy. Just based on the number of signals, we can choose the value, choose the structure. Sorry. Uh, what's the answer? Uh, only one participant have responded, sir, and he has given the first two directions. First one. Okay. Yes. Okay. I will discuss due to the lack of time. I will discuss. See here. Uh, you know that seven region is for aromatic, and this is eight hertz, eight hertz. Coupling constant. That means you have got only two signals. That means it's a symmetrical pattern. So it is symmetrically substituted and only one alkyl signal, 2.4. 2.4 meant for uh, the methyl group directly attached to the uh, aromatic ring or the methyl group attached to a carbon group. Both will show around 2 to 2.5. So now, based on just this value, you know, uh, proton NMR itself, you can decide. So it, you need a symmetrical pattern, right? You see here, it is not symmetric, you know. This one proton and three protons, so it is not symmetric. And this is also not symmetric, right? We have five protons in aromatic region. And you think about that, here you have one methyl protons and one is acetyl proton, acyl proton. So you must get two different proton NMR value for this. Maybe in the same range, two to 2.5, but you must get two different values and these aromatic ring is different from this so you must get what minimum four signals two one set for this and another set for this but we have got only one set 7.2 and 7.7 so this is also eliminated so which is symmetric this is symmetric you know both rings are symmetric so you will get only one set of signals 7.2 and 7.7 with the same coupling constant here, here, and here. And another is you have got only one value for alkyl protons, that is for this uh, uh, toluyl proton, that is a methyl proton attached to this uh, aromatic ring. So, this is the best choice. Thank you. I hope you understand.
very easily you can eliminate without uh, uh, putting too much of effort. So if you solve this kind of problem, easily you can uh, approach this uh, net examination. You can get four, see, uh, four marks. The minimum two or three questions would be asked in spectroscopy and put together B and C, they will ask four, four questions minimum. So you can easily answer these questions. And again, the similar uh, a part C question that carries four marks. And uh, sorry, I forgot to add a double bond here. You know, here you have a double bond between A and B protons. You just add a double bond here. Approximate chemical shifts are given. Uh, what is the correct form? We are asking. No answer. Okay. Okay. It's very easy to answer actually. You see, just look into this ester proton, OCH3. You know, this typical value is around 3.8. Now you can eliminate other answers based on that. So OCH3, that's a D proton, should be around 3.8. See here, this proton will be around 2.1. So, but here it is interchanged, you know, double bonded, attached to alkene, it comes around 2, like aromatic, uh, CH3 attached to aromatic ring. So, these two are wrong, and 3.9, that means it is only between 2 and 4. Now, how to decide? See, these values are same, only there is an interchange of value between A and B. One is de-shielded, another is shielded. How to go for that? All are alkenyl protons. Now, you see, there is a carbonyl group, that means, uh, invoke this concept of resonance now uh, consider the electronic effects now see this is an electron with the dying carbonyl group so this double bond will be shifted towards this so this has higher electron density than this so thereby these protons are de-shielded and A protons are shielded even if they give carbon values this carbon is shielded and this carbon is de-shielded that means de-shielded protons and carbons will come at a higher value so this B should have higher value than A. See that option B is having higher value than A in the only in the option 4. So 4 is the correct option. And you have to invoke the electronic effect. Very simple. And see this. This is again the part B question, two mark question. I you the name of the common given is. See here, you have to decide the Z and E configuration and eliminate two axes. See, it's very easy, you know. E means uh, uh, you have to assign the priority. The same priority is on the same side, then it is Z, like cis. Opposite side is like uh, you call it as E. See here, you have a hydrogen and this. You have a hydrogen. So this is a priority one, this priority one, they are in the opposite side. That means what? It is E. So we can very well eliminate the answers 1 and 2. Now you have to choose between 3 and 4. Now you have to assign RS configuration. Very simple. We have been studying RS configuration start from B, UG onwards. So it is 1, priority 1, priority 2, priority 3. So it is R, you know, the so R, you know that hydrogen, this is away from you, so hydrogen is towards you. So you have to fix your I pair and view 1B. If you view from this side, opposite side, it should be yes. But you can also choose the answer in another way. You can view from this, this front side and choose the opposite answer because the least prior element is towards you. So you can choose the opposite answer. So one, two, three, it is all. Therefore, your answer is yes. So the correct answer is four. So it's very simple. You need to know ZE configuration and RS configuration. That's all. We are combined together. That's all.
and my last question but i studied this only in uh, pg homotopic isotopic and enantiotopic and stereotopic and enantiotopic means you just choose a set of uh, ligands or groups and if you replace one you will get one enantiomer if you replace other you will get another enantiomer so in those cases you call them as enantiotopic if you get diastereo isomers then you call it as diastereotopic so this is again uh, the uh, question asked in the previous uh, Uh, CSER exam. So this is the last question. So any answer? Uh, so only one participant have responded, and he has given two as the right answer. Isotopic. Yes. Sir. Yeah. But the isotopic means uh, take uh, for example acetone or acetyl chloride. So that protons, if you replace one by other. Uh, And for example, C is the Cl. If I raise the proton by another group, even Z C is to Cl. Till I have two protons, so that is isotopic. Uh, so uh, the homotopic otherwise. And here you see, if I replace this by another group, it loses its plan of symmetry, so it becomes an enantiomer of this. If I replace this by one group, and it will not have now it has a plan of symmetry. But if you replace it, have changed by some other group, uh, it will not have plan of symmetry. Therefore, this compound is chiral. It possesses the property of chirality. And you place this uh, by the same group, I'll get the enantiomer of the first one. So these two protons are enantiotopic. So that's the answer. And if you want to shine like the sun, first burn like the sun. Thank you.